Hello everyone, welcome to the first video of my 200 books, 200 countries challenge. As the title suggests, I read two, around 200 books from nations, countries, states, whatever. Technically there's 193 listed, but we can find more. Our first book comes from Nigeria, kind of. Here's A Kata Witch by Nnedi Okorafor. She was born in the United States, but both her parents are Nigerian, Igbo to be exact. So she draws on her experiences and knowledge of the culture to write this book that takes place completely in Nigeria. And also the magical world. I thought this was a good pick because I actually have people of all ages watching my videos. So this one is somewhere between middle grade and young adult. Depending on which bookstore or library you go to, you'll find it in each section. It's not too dark to start us off, and a good comparison title would be like an African Harry Potter. What's it about? I'm so glad you asked! Sunny Noise is an albino Nigerian kid who spent most of her life in America before moving to Nigeria a few years ago. Her skin marks her as someone between worlds and points to her latent powers. And for another Harry Potter comparison, she makes new friends and she is immersed in the world of the leopard people, which is like wizards, and the muggles in this world are called lambs. Eventually, they're roped into saving the worlds from a leopard person serial killer who's on a child murdering spree. Yeah, I'm, I'm bad at summaries, but that's the gist. So me being a culture nerd, I really loved just how much each page was infused with Nigerian culture, and it was accessible to someone like me who knew practically nothing about Nigeria. You learn about the modern culture, the mythology, and the world and characters sucked me in, so I wanted to read more. This is coming from your girl who thought that Nigerian spoke Nigerian. There are several languages spoken in the country, but the ones that featured most were Igbo, Yoruba, Hausa, and of course the English Pigeon. Alright, time for the mukbang. So I'm going to attempt to make pepper soup. In the magical version, chicken causes it to explode, but I don't really eat red meat, so I'm going to have to take the risk. Unfortunately, I can't use crayfish either because I'm probably allergic. I'll be combining it with a recipe I found on mydiasporakitchen.com. Link in the description. Come, join me in the kitchen. Okay. Chef Yun Chi on the case. All right, three cups of water. So first I'll put in the water and then the onions. Onions. Wait. Whoa, I don't know how to do this. And finally, And then we're going to put in our bouillon, bouillon, however you pronounce it. Yeah. Okay, mix it all together, and we're going to wait for the boil. I read that the soup is often eaten with white rice, yams, or plantains, and I do have the rice, so that's what we'll do while it's boiling. This time we're just going to use one cup of rice. Um, don't forget to wash this beforehand. I like I like instant pots because you use the same proportion of rice and water. All right, time to make the rice. Now that it's boiling, we put in the pepper soup spice. So here we go. And this is made of ehuru, uziza, uda, onions, ginger, injas, injansa, and red pepper. I hope I pronounced that correctly. The recipe forgets to mention it, but I'm also adding garlic. Now we put in the chicken to absorb the flavor. I cheated and got rotisserie chicken. Here's my attempt to show you what it looks like. It smells very interesting. I've never smelled anything like it before. So we'll see how it is. Now we add the basil. Instead of scent leaves, I'm adding basil. And unfortunately, there are no, f there are no fresh basil or parsley leaves in the community garden, so I'm using Dry. The one teaspoon. There we go. I kind of want that dash of red, so I'm going to add paprika, like some of them say to do. That should be good. Okay. Hey mom, how many likes does the video need for you to try the soup? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> now we let it simmer for one minute. The rice will be done in 12 minutes, and then we 
mukbang. So here's the soup and I'm having it with white rice. But I don't know how to tilt the camera so that it shows it. <laughs> All right, I'm orange for some reason, but I can't help it. Time to taste. Okay. That's interesting. Super basic, but interesting. Hmm. I was scared it'd be too spicy, so I didn't put in the habanero pepper, but I should have. Your turn! It's good! Kind of reminds me of Korean food, so I think I'm going to, um, like, take the rice and put it in. See how that works? Is it sacrilege? I don't know. One thing I didn't do was peel the onion enough, apparently. Pish. I honestly don't get the point of real mukbangs, mukbangs, but I will probably be doing more cooking and testing out in the future. So that ends video number one. Please let me know if you have any book ideas or if there's a book from your native country that you want me to read. And I'll see you next time. Bye!